This is the news bits on NCBN. I am Ney Ofla Clark. Welcome. President Mohamedou Buhari is in Naomi, Republic of Niger, to participate in the 57th Ordinary Session of the ECOS Authority of Heads of State and Government. The President landed at the Diori Shamana International Airport, Naomi, and was received by the Nigerian government delegation led by Prime Minister Brigi Rafini and the Nigerian Ambassador to Niger, Ambassador Atahiru Halilu. At the one-day summit, the West African leaders are expected to deliberate on the special report on COVID-19 to be presented by President Mohamedou Buhari as ECOWAS champion on the fight against COVID-19 in the sub-region. The Nigerian leader coordinated the sub-regional response against the pandemic. The summit will also receive special reports on the ECOWAS monetary cooperation program as well as the 2020 interim report on activities of the sub-regional body including ECOWAS Vision 2050. Cases of terrorism, insurgency, armed banditry and piracy will also come to the fore as well as the disruption of the democratic process by the military in Mali, even as the summit looks at ways of strengthening democratic processes in the sub-region. Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, has stated that the federal government has adequate capacity to accelerate the attainment of regional and global agendas of the National Development Plan 2020 to 2025. The plan, according to a statement issued in Abuja, would enable Nigeria to attain targets which include the African Union 2063 Agenda, ECOWAS Integration Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. The minister also went on to say that the plan will be implemented from January 2021 after the expiration of the Economy Recovery and Growth Plan in December. He also expects the document to make possible and probable future for the citizens of Nigeria as well as come up with measures for a future that all desire. The federal government has said that it will spend 2.3 trillion naira to reposition the nation's economy as part of Nigeria's economic sustainability plan to curtail the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The special advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adeshino, said this in a presentation at the second annual conference and general meeting of the International Islamic University Malaysia Alumni Association, Nigeria chapter, on Sunday. Adeshino said the Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan, NESP, comprised a 500 billion Naira COVID-19 crisis intervention fund meant to upgrade health facilities nationwide and finance a special public works program. He added that 1.1 trillion Naira structured lending will come from the Central Bank of Nigeria, 334 billion Naira from external bilateral and multilateral sources, while 302.9 billion Naira from undisclosed sources. While activities at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, resumed on Saturday as scheduled, activities at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, came with a bit of a delay. NCBN correspondent reports that the first international flight at the Abuja Airport landed at about 1.30 p.m. A water salute welcoming the first international flight since the closure of the country's airspace more than five months ago at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport. A350-900 Ethiopian Air conveying a total of 120 passengers from Addis Ababa landed at about 1400 hours. Some of them Nigerian returnees stranded abroad for months. At last, Today's flight is homecoming, but not without some hitches. They issue a guideline that we should do a COVID-19 test within seven days before we travel. When I go to Addis Ababa today, they said that the federal government has trained it to 72 hours. And we did not. I've done my test already. And I was running out of time. I don't want that seven days to lapse. But when I got to Addis Ababa, they said that uh, government has changed it to 72 hours. Then there was an uproar. People have been checking, taking their seats in the plane. You ask them to leave and come out. You know Nigeria for what we are. There was a, almost a pandemonium in the, in the plane. And therefore, people refuse to come out. Apart from that, the system here is okay. 
game. The social distancing is very perfect and I really appreciate the effort of federal government. Despite the hitches, however, Augustine Adam believes safety measures put in place to curtail the spread of the novel coronavirus at the country's airport is commendable. But, uh, but, but what I must have to confess is that uh, due, due to the yeah, protocol I observe here is far, far more better than at this above. Because we are parked in one place, which I was even afraid that something might happen. But on getting to this place, I'm really impressed with what I see. Yeah. Okay. So credit, kudos to Although Ethiopian Airline is the first and only international flight that landed in the nation's capital on Monday, other airline operators are expected in the coming days. Ayubelia, NCBN News, Abuja. Assistant Comptroller General Aliu Saidu, who recently rose to the rank in charge of ICT in acting capacity, briefed the press on the achievements they've had amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. The former Area Controller of Customs, Area 2 Command on Airport, stated that despite the pandemic, the Area Command generated a total of 69 billion 449 million 896,000. 799 Naira 79 Kobo between January and August 2020 under his watch. This was made known after he handed the reins to Comptroller Baba Ahmed, further stating that in terms of export, a total of 2,402,776 metric tons of export activities with free onboard value of 128,711,000 $308 was achieved within the period of review. As for seizures, Comptroller Saidu also highlighted 31 seizures involving 27 containers, amounting to a total duty paid value of 825,435,096 naira, which include foreign rice, vegetable oil, secondhand clothing, used tires, white cement, and vehicles, amongst others. While applauding the cooperation between them and sister agencies, he urged officers to uphold their duties, make seizures, and arrest criminals who seek to undermine the rules set in place. Amidst persistent public uproar over the recent increase in electricity tariff, the number of the nation's power plants sitting idle rose to 13 on Sunday. While many Nigerians were still hurting from the hike in electricity tariff, Power generation in the country dropped on Sunday as four more power plants were shut down in two days due to gas constraints. Low load demand by the distribution companies, maintenance, frequency response and rupturing of gas pipelines amongst others. Data obtained from the Nigeria electricity system operator on Sunday showed 13 out of the 27 power plants on the national grid were not generating any megawatts of electricity as of 6am on Sunday. All eight power plants built under the National Integrated Power Project were idle as of 6 a.m. on Sunday. 6 a.m. on Friday, nine plants were shut down. They were joined by Gerigu 2, Saple 2 and Alauji on Saturday as well as Afam 4 and 5 on Sunday. The other idle plants were Olon Shogo 2, Omotosho, Odupani, Ihivobo, Bahrain, Ibom Power, AES, ASCO and Trans Amadi IPP. The presidency, in a statement released by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, disclosed while reacting to protests by labor movements and civil society groups on the fuel price increment as well as the hike in electricity tariffs. Shehu noted that posterity will remember Buhari as the president who made real economic contributions by eliminating the evils of corruption embedded in subsidies. Troops of Operation Wellstroke have arrested eight and killed one bandit in Benue and Nasrawa states. Coordinator Defense Media Operations, Major General John Enenche, in a statement indicated that four of the bandits were eliminated during a raid on the hideout in Se Agi, Gwe West, local government area of Benue state. Major General Enenche noted that one of the bandits met his Waterloo when troops stormed bandits' camp along Benue Nasrawa border 
Several arms were said to have been recovered from the encounter. He further pledged the commitment of the armed forces of Nigeria to combating the common enemies of the nation and gave assurances it will not stop until normalcy is restored to all the troubled zones of the country, while further commending the public for providing credible intelligence information that facilitated the successful operation. An increase in sexually transmitted diseases and teenage pregnancies have been recorded in Ibadan, Oyo State, during the national lockdown. Southwest Regional Manager of the Society for Family Health, Tunde Ogungbemiro, in a ceremony held at Oyo State for their Adolescent 360 project, disclosed. He revealed that according to the data in health facilities used by the A360 in Akiele and Ibadan Northeast local government areas of Oyo State, a large number of adolescents were sexually active, contrary to the belief of their parents or guardians. He also expressed the need for them to be taught about reproductive health in order to prevent them from contracting STDs like HIV and unwanted pregnancies, as the number of teenage pregnancy continues to be on the rise in the state. Meanwhile, the Executive Secretary of your State Primary Board, Dr. Muidin Olatunji, said the state government will replicate the project done by the group in other parts of the state. And now to entertainment. Nigerian artist Cynthia Morgan has again called out her former record label boss Jude Okoye over the money that he reportedly owes her. The singer in her Insta story post alleged that Jude Okoye owes her 7 million naira and also dragged in her former manager Joy Tongo into the call out post by attaching RIP to her photo. Still on entertainment, Oscar-winning Czech director, writer and actor Jiri Menzel has died at the age of 82 after battling with serious health issues. Menzel won an Academy Award in 1968 for Best Foreign Language Film for World War II drama Closely Watched Trains. He was one of the leading figures in the Czech New Wave cinema during the 1960s alongside One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest director Miloš Forman. Menzel was rarely seen in public after a brain surgery in 2017. He died on Saturday, his wife Olga Menzelova said. She also commended Menzel's bravery, taste, extraordinary will to live and his humour despite his struggle since the last three years. Let's join Eunice Johnson for Sports News. Thanks, May. Welcome to the sports segment of the News Bits. I am Eunice Johnson. Let's bring you some sports news making the rounds in the world of sports. In spite of finishing as runners up at the 2020 African Cup in Tunisia earlier this year, Aruna Quadri has been listed among the top 20 players in the world that will compete at the ITTF Men's World Cup scheduled for November in China. In a statement released by ITTF at the weekend, the men and women's World Cup events will kickstart the restart of international table tennis competitions after several months of suspended activity due to COVID-19. Quadri and African Cup champion Egypt's Hamed Saleh will compete in the men's event, while African Cup women's champion Dina Meshref of Egypt is the sole representative of Africa in the women's World Cup. Manchester City winger Riyad Mahrez and defender Emeric Laporte have tested positive for COVID-19. Algeria's Mahrez, 29, and Frenchman Laporte, 24, will not train with their teammates while they self-isolate in line with the UK government and Premier League rules. Manchester City say neither player was displaying symptoms of COVID-19. Pep Guardiola's side play Wolverhampton Wanderers in their first fixture of the new league season on 21st September. And that's it on Sports News. I'm Eunice Johnson. Back to you, Nay. And now to weather with Jordan Atahiru. Welcome to the weather report for Tuesday, the 8th of September 2020 across some parts of Nigeria and some parts of Africa on NCBN. Abuja will experience 21 degrees Celsius. Ushubu, Katsina, Mina, Guso, Meduguri, Yola, Ilorin and Makodi will experience 21 degrees Celsius. Umwahia, Ibadan, Potakat, Kalaba, Uyo, Oweri, Onicha, Enugu, Nasarawa, Jalingo, and Sokoto will experience 22 degrees Celsius. Kaduna will experience 19 degrees Celsius. Bochi will experience 19 degrees Celsius. Kano will have a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. And the lowest temperature will be experienced in Lagos and Jos at 17 degrees Celsius. 
Lokoja, Gumbi, Yanagua, Asaba, Jigawa and Buni Kibi will experience 23 degrees Celsius and to some other parts of Africa Cape Town will experience 13 degrees Celsius, Kampala 17 degrees Celsius, Yaoundé 20 degrees Celsius, Accra 24 degrees Celsius and Dakar 24 degrees Celsius. Kindly follow us on our social media handles for more updates. And that's the news bits on NCBN. Thank you for watching.